Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. Hey, you guys. Quite a few things happening this week. I didn't even ask for no subjects because I already knew what I wanted to talk about. So first on the list, we have to talk about Bobby Christina and her fight for her life or you know, we don't really know what exactly is going on with Bobby Christina. All that we do know is that last Saturday she was found unresponsive and face down in her bathtub in her townhome by who's now become known as probably her drug supplier, some drug dealer kid. Um, they said it was a whole bunch of people in the house or whatever. So anyway, the police came, they got her. They said they didn't find any drugs there and she has been in the hospital under extreme guard. Nobody really knows exactly what's going on. Rumors are flying all about that she's brain dead, that she's has little brain activity, that she's, you know, basically just waiting to die. Then the family comes out and says none of that is true. Okay, but nobody has still said what exactly the issue is so you know how we do we come up with our own stories when we don't have any confirmation a uh, real sad story can't say that I'm surprised um, everybody seems so shocked by um, you know the turn of events with Bobby Christina and um, I just I won't say that I was desensitized or anything to it of course I would like for this little girl to pull through and win at life but you know, I don't think Bobby Brown, I mean, uh, Bobby Christina has been happy. I really can't tell you when I thought that this girl was probably the happiest. She was troubled. Even before Whitney Houston died, she had her issues. We had seen her on the internet um, with bongs, you know, doing drugs, dabbling. And I mean, that was some time ago. So we would say she was probably in her early teens, 12, 13, 14. Um, you know, she grew up in that environment. That's what she knows. That's what her parents did. And, um, you know, she picked up the habit, obviously. Um, you know, they're still not saying that that's what the issue is, you know, that, that she had any type of overdose. The police went into the home the second time, searched again, and then they did say they found some drugs then. <clears throat> but like I said, they haven't released any information on if drugs were involved you know, if there was any foul play, any of these type of things. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I, I feel bad for her. I feel bad for the family. I feel bad for Bobby Brown. Um, but I just, I, you know, I, I wasn't really surprised. So I'm just praying that, you know, if this girl does make it through that you know she makes it through and wants to live her life or well, maybe this will be the catalyst that will make her realize that she's got some demons that she has to deal with um, but other than that I don't really know what else to say about it I don't really know what else to say about it people are saying that they think the the movie the Whitney Houston movie probably was what pushed her over the edge and my response to that is I don't really think that it was the movie because the movie even though it was you know a little bit more particular we we didn't learn nothing new in the movie I mean Whitney Houston herself had come out and said that she and Bobby Brown did drugs together okay and that they were both addicted to each other I mean we saw it acted out on screen but other than that it wasn't nothing new it was things that I'm sure she had heard and seen for herself in real life so I think it's easy to put it all on the movie because of the timing of all of this happening but I think it has a little bit more relevancy and um, you know connection with the day that her mother actually died we're right up on the time when Whitney Houston died was found in the bathtub I mean it's so many you know it's so many comparisons that we can make she died in the tub okay around in february around grammy time and you know so it's the same thing and i think that was more of what bobby christina if she did indeed do this to herself i think that was more of the effect that she was trying to make on everybody not necessarily because of the movie okay and it's funny that everybody loved the movie and did all of this about the movie just not too long ago and now all of a sudden it's just like oh they shouldn't admit did the movie 
okay it's funny to me how everybody talk bad horrible you guys can go back into one of my old top of the blogs and I said I'm not gonna talk about her anymore I never have really said much about Bobby Christina um, but I always said I'm just gonna leave the whole subject alone because she needs help okay y'all talked about this child terribly now all of a sudden it's we gotta pray for her and I mean we do need to pray for her but it's always so ironic to me how everybody just all of a sudden, we got to pray for this baby. I'm so worried for this baby, you know. But we was all laughing at the fact that she had on two different pair of shoes just not too long ago, okay. So it's, you know, it's, I want it to happen for her, but you know, I have my own life that I have to worry about too. I'm not going to get too much more involved in it than that. I'm praying that she pulls out and that she lives a life that is, you know, successful to her own self makes her own self happy okay surrounds herself with people who love her and want good things to happen for her but it's up to bobby christina now i mean she's an adult you know everybody we can't keep on blaming i mean yeah you know the family's got its issues they've got their fucked up ways and all of that but can't keep blaming everybody else as bobby christina has got to make whatever necessary changes that she deems for herself that you know that she needs that needs to happen Otherwise, if she survives and she's still the same unhappy, tormented soul, she's going to try it again. And she probably will be successful next time. I mean, if she was in the tub, you know, it looked like she really wanted it to happen this time. We'll see if it's some foul play. They're saying that the family is fighting, the Brown family and Houston fight, um, family is fighting. Then they say they're not. Okay, they say that she was never married to this Nick Gordon guy, which I believe. It's so funny to me. Why didn't we ever try to find a marriage license for them? I mean, we go back and check all these different reality stars, and they say they're married. We're going to make sure if they're not married, okay? We never tried to see if Bobby, Christina, and Nick Gordon were married. We just went, went with it. Um, if he's not married to her, then good. I just didn't think he was good for her. And, you know, it's good now. If he's really not married to her, then he has no say to her fortunes. Because, of course, that's the next big question is where's the money going to go? If she dies, where's the money going to go? Okay, people are saying that it should go to her father because he is, it was her money. So now, but then I'm thinking to myself, like, well, did she even get all of the money? Did she get any of the money yet? I know she just recently turned 21. Um, you know, does the money go to Sissy? Because Whitney Houston, that's her mother. She wasn't tied to Bobby Brown any longer. They weren't married anymore. You know, so it's going to be all this. You know, it's going to be a big fight over this fortune. If there is even one. I mean, we've heard rumors about, you know, she gets 10 million now. She gets 10 millions in so many years. And she gets... 80 million you know it's all these numbers oh, nobody even know how much money Whitney Houston had I need all of my lawyers out there to chime in and let me know exactly how that would go down you know where would the money what in what line you know where does this money go but you know it's going to be a big fight over it but anyway that's it you guys our prayers go up for the Houston and the Brown families and of course for Bobby Christina All right, you guys, so Celebrity Apprentice. I don't watch the show because I get enough of Kenya Moore and all her antics on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And not only that, but I don't really like Donald Trump, and I've never really been interested in that show. So, yeah, I've never, I never watched it. However, all last Sunday, is that the day that it comes on? Yeah, I think it comes on Sunday. All last Sunday on Twitter, I had noticed, you know, my all my tweet team twirl, they was in the tizzy. I just kept seeing Kenya's name come up on my timeline I very rarely look at my Twitter timeline unless I'm tweeting myself but I just kept seeing wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying because it was always just so much <laughs> but um then I found out the next day that that was the episode that she got put off for supposedly stealing Vivica Fox's phone so I was like okay let me go on and check this episode out you guys already know because people have already made videos on it to make a long story short uh, she was on a team. Vivica, Kenya, and Geraldo Rivera were on a team together. They had to do something for um, King Hawaiian buns, you know, the sweet rolls. And um, they didn't win their challenge. So they were in the boardroom to be, somebody was going to get fired. And uh, during the whole time that they were doing the challenge, Vivica kept mentioning that her phone was missing, that it was stolen, this, that, and the other. Well, once they got into the boardroom, you realize that um, Kenya is, you know, everybody's kind of fighting for their life kind of thing. 
talking about what this person did didn't do and like I said since I don't watch Celebrity Apprentice I don't really know the relationship between Kenya and Vivica but I'm assuming right now that you know these two girls don't like each other <laughs> so they're going back and forth against each other you know Kenya starts talking about how Vivica um, you know she's just unpleasant and she doesn't do anything and you know how she tweeted that she was in menopause and that being 50 wasn't sexy and you know she's always mad or something like that so of course that changes the whole tone of the room because you know women can be quite touchy when you get to talking about their age and whether or not they're sexy and you know menopause <laughs> bitch now you calling me old so of course it changes the tone Vivica you know she she takes it on back to the hood and she starts to kind of go off on Kenya calling her a bitch she old low down dirty dog that this she's a dirty bird right there calls her all these names once they check to see if if it was tweeted out and then you know Vivica says she didn't do it and then they come up with the whole thing about the phone being stolen and you know Kenya saying that she didn't do it and whatever finally Donald Trump just was like you know what you're fired from what I understand Kenya probably wasn't gonna win it looks like Lisa Gibbons just from me watching that one episode I was like oh they love Lisa it looks like she gonna be the ones to win but anyway when they were walking out the boardroom and you know Kenya she does her whole how she always does you know she's gracious she, she doesn't you know she's not ghetto she doesn't resort to these type of things you know that's Kenya's staple and uh, when they're leaving out of the boardroom <laughs> And Vivica's walking off and she's just like, bye trick. Kenya's just like, you know, it was nice working with you and I wish you this. And, you know, she's just like, bye trick. You know, that's, bitch, that's why your ass is leaving. Um, look, I understand the whole idea of Celebrity Apprentice is to know how to play the game. Okay, you've got to be able to manipulate, you know, you've got to, it's all of these things that you have to be. Because if we're acting like we're in the real world and we're supposed to be these cutthroat business people, then this is the way you need to be as well. Okay, so in that respect, yes, Kenya plays the game well. Okay, some people are a little bit more cutthroat than others. All right, but y'all, what makes it so funny to me is how Team Twirl will never, ever admit when their girl is wrong. Okay, this is the whole problem with you know all these different reality stars or all these different just people in the entertainment industry in general okay they get to this point where they feel like they can say and do anything because they have all these yes men people that are behind them that would just tell them that it's okay no matter what no matter what you guys know that if that was Portia I'm using Portia because she is such the you know she's just the antichrist to you team Tur Toro people but if Portia had done that to Vivica Fox and you guys would have been all over Portia okay and seeing how wrong she was and this that and the other so it's just it just is funny to me that team twirl always will back up kenya no matter what you know when i watch different people's videos and they're just like well you know we don't know if she stole the phone bullshit you guys know she stole that phone she was smiling she was laughing she almost wanted to admit that she did but she knew she couldn't why would Vivica Fox tweet that? You know, it just was so inconsistent and um, she didn't admit it because stealing, no matter how small it is, is stealing. And she could have been, you know, Vivica, if she really wanted to, she could have brought charges against her if she did admit it. So, you know, it just kills me how people just give, they just give her all kind of excuses. And I like Kenya enough. I don't not like her. I think she's very entertaining. I think she's very funny. I think she's a beautiful woman. You know, smart. Knows how to get under people's skin. You know, conniving. You know, all of that. But it just comes to a point when you have to say, bitch, you wrong. Then you know good damn well you shouldn't have stole her phone and tweeted that. Okay, so it was just amazing to me. I, I, I don't really care, though. I don't watch the show any old fucking way, so... You don't give me, I don't give a fuck if Kenya on that <laughs> or not. But uh, y'all need to stop with this whole yes man. So let me tell you something. When I hit it big, <laughs> my rock stars out there. I'm not one to really forget where I come from. But I don't want, I don't want to ever have a, peop, a bunch of people around me that just agree to any old fuck shit that I come up with. Okay, y'all, y'all promise to stick with me the whole time. Tell me when I'm right and wrong. Okay, well, we gonna be all right then, but yeah, y'all. Y'all know that was some bullshit. That girl need to get her ass kicked off that show.
So the Bruce Jenner story has definitely picked up steam since the last time I talked to you. You guys, they didn't caught up with his 88-year-old damn mama. I was like, no, y'all didn't go to the damn granny mama. Why y'all talk to this lady? This lady is old, okay? And evidently Associated Press, is that what it's called? Associated? The AP? They caught up with the lady and was asking her about his journey. Nobody has ever said transgender, sex change, you know, sex transformation, any of this. It's always about this journey. But anyway, the mom sort of confirms that, yes, he's going through some changes, that the family is in support of him, including her. You know how she had a conversation with him and he said he's still going to be the same person. He's still going to get his, you know, his pilot's license. He's still going to race cars. He's still going to do this, that, and the other, um, you know. And the mom was just like, yeah, it's a hard concept to wrap your mind around. Um, but yeah, still, I ha I still haven't heard the words. He is getting a sex change or he is taking medication for, you know, a gender reassignment or he is, you know, going through a transformation from a man to I haven't heard those exact terms. So it's still real strange to me. But y'all now they're saying that Diane Sawyer is going to do a... Um, sit down with him that they've already kind of started filming the some of the segments for the interview um that's supposed to air in may because i told you his actual docuseries is supposed to air after the keeping up with the kardashians the 10th season they did say that the keeping up with the kardashian um they're not doing any press for the show at all okay the family is just waiting for the for the new season to come on which is strange and they're saying that because they don't even want people to be asking them questions where they would have to answer questions about what's going on with bruce they just want it all to be shown when the episode comes on it just oh my god it's so crazy to me i was talking to some girls when i was getting my hair done the other day and one of the girls was just like just to be 65 years old and finally realize that you you know would rather be a woman is sad because you know that this can't just have happened all of a sudden he's decided he wants to be a woman okay it means that he's lived a lot of his life being unhappy as a man but couldn't change but the shit is just still so weird to me like oh my god <laughs> talking my hairstyle she was just like i just don't want to see him on the red carpet with like a dress and some pearls in his back <laughs> <laughs> I was just like this is so crazy but you know we're gonna learn a lot if it is in fact true Bruce Jenner is going to be so important to the whole transgender community okay he's gonna bring that whole um, situation to light to the forefront the same way that Magic Johnson brought, brought AIDS to light okay not in the negative but I'm just saying in the fact that the whole world now knows that somebody you know so a big name is suffering from something, okay? Bruce Jenner is suffering from the fact that he didn't want to be a man anymore, and now he wants to be a woman. So, yeah, y'all, it's crazy. I just, I still, I cannot believe it, but that's what they say is happening, you guys. So, we're going to see. I definitely will be watching the new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Will you? Portia versus Tayana Taylor. So, Portia posted on Instagram the other day that she was going to be selling t-shirts that says hashtag unbothered on the chest, okay? And there was going to be a pre-sale in a couple of days. Tayana Taylor, who, you know, is the Instagram thug, is always going on and off on somebody. I mean, she's kind of calmed down since she got her boyfriend, but before that, she would always be up in po folks' comments saying all kind of shit. She tells Portia, um... You know that Unbothered is my clothing line, okay? You will not be selling those shirts, and you follow me, so you need to take this down. Then Portia came out and said, uh, obviously, boo-boo don't know that you can not trademark the term Unbothered because it's a commonly used word, and um, she, there's no way that she can have that trademarked. So then Tayana puts out the paperwork um, of her when she was able to get the term unbothered trademarked for her clothing line. What I think is the problem here is whether or not you can use the term unbothered because if that was the case, every time anybody said unbothered, we would be able to get charged by Tayana Taylor. You cannot necessarily trademark the term unbothered however if i wanted to come out with a clothing line called unbothered then i couldn't do that because she already has it 
okay but you can't not tell me that I can't put unbothered on a t-shirt so I think that that's what the difference is here that Tiana wasn't understanding she has hashtag unbothered but this is Portia's t-shirt line so it's not, I don't think that Tiana is going to be able to stop this um, Tayana kind of tried to backpedal the other day and then just say, you know what, I shouldn't even be fighting with this girl during Black History Month, especially because she doesn't know about Black History Month and she's going to put specially. I was like, bitch, if you're going to read somebody, you can't have typos in your shit when you're trying to correct somebody and then your shit is fucked up, you know? So I'm just thinking like, yeah, you, Portia's going to be able to put the t-shirt out because you can say hashtag, um, but it was just like as if I was to try to trademark the word um hello okay so then all of a sudden what people can't have hello on their shirt no you can't do that it's not like it's nike okay it's a different word it's a it's not a commonly used word nike is not anything that we say girl i'm going to, you know she was nike she was nike what the you know so anyway that's the problem he ain't no ain't really no problem here tayana just was a little molded she thought she was doing something but um you know if you want to get the t-shirt from portia yeah you can still <laughs> you can still do it y'all it feels like the super bowl happened so long ago but um it was just last sunday so i guess i can talk about it actually nothing to talk about in the super bowl other than the fact that i just couldn't believe that seattle lost that game and i don't even watch football but i would i was watching that last play i was just like oh my god how do you lose like okay i'm sorry i know i got a lot of seattle seattle seahawk fans out there including a lot of people in my family i have family in seattle hey what's up seattle tacoma how y'all doing in washington anyway i want to talk about the goddamn halftime show okay and i know people have already talked about it but fuck i haven't um i enjoyed the halftime show i always enjoy the the halftime shows they've done a really good job these last few years of keeping us entertained now i'm not no super big Katy perry fan but i like Katy perry enough i know enough of her real popular songs um, to, you know, I could enjoy Katy Perry. You know, when she came out, I was just like, oh, okay. I just like to see just the whole cre creativity of the set and, you know, the costumes or the clothing. And, you know, she had the big tiger or whatever she was on. So that was fun. But y'all, when the bitch heard, I was just like, yeah. I was at a damn Super Bowl party, but my husband was having a Super Bowl party somewhere. And y'all, I'm telling you, I was like, okay, Roxanne, you got to act right. Because I didn't really know the people. I wanted to get up and dance so bad. Plus, I had to almost drink a whole fucking bottle of wine. But I knew that I couldn't get up and dance because my husband was going to be very annoyed with me because nobody else was dancing and everybody was just sitting around and all of that. But y'all, I'm telling you, it took everything in my might to keep my ass planted in that fucking seat. When I told him later on that night, he was just like, I saw you. He was like, I, I was like, she better not get her ass up. <laughs> y'all, Roxanne loved to dance. I dance all the time. I don't understand parties where there's no dancing. You know, me and my friends will dance even if nobody is dancing. But I didn't have any of my friends there. And I was just like, okay, Roxanne. Just, but if I knew some people there, then I'd have got my ass up there. <laughs> anyway, that fucking Missy. Oh, my God. Music makes you lose control. Music makes you lose control. What the? You guys? What? That shit was jamming. Oh, my God. I swear, every time I listen to Missy... It's just certain songs that make you have to dance. I don't understand. Poison. Um, any of the, you know, music make me lose control. And uh, keep, get your freak on. Luke. Scars. Um, 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 Doodoo Brown. You know, just it's certain songs that I hear. It don't matter. Shake your pants cameo. It's just certain songs that I hear to just make me get up. I just couldn't understand how everybody could sit around. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed Missy. I hate that, you know, she's got her illness, her thyroid issues, and she just, you know, won't come back out. The music game right now needs her so bad. Just so bad. But it's so different right now. Everything's so sexualized. And, you know, we've never looked at Missy that way. So I think she would have kind of a hard time getting back into it with, you know, when you got bitches out here and just in bras and panties uh, performing. Ass is huge and titties and, you know. So I don't know 
how Missy would get back in the game. But, you know, talent always overcomes everything else. Okay, I thought it was really funny how the young kids didn't know and thought she was somebody that, you know, was just coming out. <laughs> I was like, look, my babies know who Missy Elliott is. Okay, my kids know old music. Okay, I, I listen to their music, but they listen to my music as well. Fuck, if I got to sit here and listen to the young thug and the ugly, ugly little boy and the Migos and the, you know, all of these other people, then they should listen to my music as well. But, you yeah, I enjoyed it. They had some arrests. Um, Warren Sapp was arrested for prostitution. Some shit about he didn't want to pay the bitches. And they got into an argument. I was like, y'all didn't learn from that whole Secret Service situation. Uh, pay the motherfuckers and stop bringing attention to yourself. Fuck is wrong with y'all? These football players is crazy. Also, old boy from Moesha. You know, the one with the big, the one with the disc. <laughs> what was his name, y'all? I can't think of his name, but he also got arrested. He got arrested for drunk driving. So That's it. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Who did you guys want to win? Are you still very heartbroken that C the Seahawks lost? Okay, do you feel that um, the Patriots cheated with deflate, glate, deflate gate? Something tells me it's something up with that damn Tom Brady. Because I saw an interview with him, and he was avoiding that question so tough. Kept on saying he wanted to concentrate on the game, which I understand. But if you are being accused of something that could bring a whole shadow on the whole entire situation, how hard is it to say, hell no, I didn't tell them to, de um, to deflate the balls? How hard is it to say that? Instead, to keep saying, well, I'd rather to wait until after the game, you know, till all these findings come out. Okay, something tells me he said something to somebody. He might not have said those words in particular, but he said something that could have even been misconstrued for them to go and let the air out these damn balls. So, yeah. But I don't know much about football, y'all, so I could be wrong. Okay, I ain't trying to be gospel. Don't be down in them comments trying to go off on me, you New England Patriot fans. Fuck you won, okay? We're going to let you have it. You want it? You the Super Bowl champions. All right? Shit, I talked about this last week too. Suge, you guys, they went on ahead and charged Suge with murder. He is also being charged with attempted murder, hit and run resulting in death, and hit and run resulting in injury. So, Suge Knight looked like his karma then finally caught up with him. I'm not wanting to, you know, always be talking about karma and shit. But when you look at this this situation, you I don't know what else you could fucking call it. Now, Suge then got old, y'all. So, Suge nerves can't take it like he used to, okay? He ain't quite the hard, you know, the hard-edged gangster that he used to. I mean, shit, he probably go down to the hood, but then he take his ass back home to where he got some money, right? Okay, so, yeah, when he got charged, he said he was having chest pains. And shit passed out, collapsed. They had to take his ass to the damn to the uh, hospital, and they thought he had had a heart attack, and he had a panic attack. I was like, "You ain't panicking about going to jail?" <laughs> I mean, I'm not laughing. It is so not a laughing matter, but I'm just like, you know, he's this whole hard ass, you know, big six whatever, six feet something, three hundred and something pound dude. Okay, always with the cigar, you know, always in the red, you know, shug, and then he's panicking about going to jail. I mean, I guess finally going to jail for attempted murder or murder is, you know, that ain't no shit to sneeze at. And they say if he is found guilty, he will, he, you know, he's facing life in prison. It's a sad situation for Suge, but I was just like, when they were showing the pictures of him when he was going to the jail, shit, the nigga looked like, his <laughs> nerve. he just looked like he was just looking around like, oh my God. They revoked his bail. Um, I think he probably thought that at least he was going to be able to, you know, get bail. But um, they were like, no, he's a flight risk because he ran when he originally hit the people. So they was just like, nah, bro, you going to sit your ass up in this jail till we go to court. So he might, maybe they might give him bail eventually. But right now, he ain't going nowhere. So, mm, no. The guy that got killed is was a friend of my husband's, I, I found out. And he kept telling me I met him before, but I don't remember him. But uh, my husband used to low ride in L.A. You guys, the guy had a low riding shop. So, anyway... <laughs> y'all, we just some niggas. We didn't took our ass up to Georgia, took it to Atlanta, but y'all, we we was riding hard on Crenshaw. My husband had to. Anyway, y'all, we gonna keep our eye on this story too.
Isn't it crazy though? Shook is gonna be in jail, y'all. Maybe for a long time. Could be for the rest of his life. All right, you guys, so that's it. Sure, top of the blogs, I know, but I'm about to do another video for my TV talk because I think that's going to take this video way too long. So that is it, y'all. We do this every single week. So make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.